Hi, this is Martha with Nature Niche. And today I wanted to talk about why it's important to monitor our bird nest boxes. So there are several reasons. Um, one, we put up the nest boxes to help support our native songbirds that would naturally nest in um, cavities in either live or dead trees um, made by other animals such as woodpeckers um, or further excavated uh, by other animals. So that's where they would naturally nest. We put up nest box structures to help them because of introduced invasive species like house or also known as English sparrows, um, starlings, some of these um, invasive birds that also nest in cavities and compete for uh, prime nest spots uh, with our native songbirds like bluebirds and tree swallows, chickadees, nuthatches, house wrens, um, those types of species. And so it's important to monitor and check for those species, pull their nests. Um, it's illegal to pull the nest of a native songbird, so make sure you take some time to learn your nest characteristics um, and understand what you're looking at but it's important to monitor the boxes and prevent those invasive bird species uh, from nesting. Um, otherwise, that's just making the problem worse by allowing them, giving them um, a place to raise more young. So that's uh, one important reason to monitor. Another is to check for things like uh, dummy nests by other species that are set up. Um, house wrens will do that and then not use them and the box could go unused if there's a dummy nest um, in there or wasps can take up residence, um, mice, ants, um, squirrels can chew the openings larger and then um, make the boxes very uh, vulnerable to uh, predators getting in. And so you wanna check your boxes for that reason as well. So we monitor during the nesting season, roughly um, mid-April mid um, through at least early August. You don't wanna check too frequently um, and you want to be pretty quick and purposeful about it and then, and then step away from the box, especially if it, if it is occupied. Um, so it's important to um, observe the box as you're walking up, and I'm talking to you right now in a box that I know is empty. Um, we, we put this box up because uh, house wrens nested in our other Stovall Ultimate um, Bluebird house. And so I put this one up in our front yard, um, approximately 100 feet away, hoping to, to get some late, uh, late nesting bluebirds. So no action yet but I thought it'd be a good opportunity to talk to you, um, use it as a demonstration for nest box monitoring. Um, so when you're approaching a nest box, it's always good to watch it first, see if you can tell what kind of birds, if any, are coming and going, and also see if there are anything, uh, anything's like um, wasps coming in and out. So you wanna um, watch for that, and if you can see what's going on with that ahead of time, um, you can make an informed choice about you know, how, how to approach it, um, wearing gloves and that sort of thing. But it's important to um, approach from the side of the box. You want to um, make noise, you can whistle, you can talk, um, and then uh, before opening anything, make sure you stand to the side and clear of the entrance hole. And you can knock and then slowly open the door. Some species um, or individuals will sit tight even through all of that. Um, house wrens, for example, are known to sit tight. Um, so again, stay clear of the entrance hole and slowly open the door and check. This nest box has the viewing plexiglass, so it's lower risk of um, nestlings popping out or, or prematurely fledge, fledging. Um, 
So you take a look. It's helpful to have a small hand mirror that you can put in and check um, deeper into the cavity without having to touch the nest or move it, move um, twigs or grasses around to be able to see. That could jostle the eggs or um, the baby birds and they could fall and you don't want to do that. So it's best not to touch anything if you're not tall enough to see all the way in. Um, using, using the hand mirror can be helpful for that. And then you don't want to stay long, observe less than a, less than a minute. Um, and if there are young, you want to be careful about um, closing the door, making sure everybody's clear and then latching it securely. So those are the, the basics of uh, monitoring a nest box. And now we're going to go take a look at uh, the first one I put up a couple of months ago. I checked it about six days ago and it had four house wren eggs, little brown house wren eggs in it. And I'm just going to check quickly to see um, if they've hatched and everything's okay. Do a quick look for um, parasites or anything amiss, um, dead baby birds, that sort of thing. So I'm going to check really quickly and then we're going to get out of their way so um, they can get back to uh, their normal activities. We'll take a look. All right, let's take a look. Got my little house friend. See what's going on here. Anybody in there? Take a quick look. Oh, we're getting chattered at. Parents are nearby, but we didn't flush anybody out. I'm having trouble seeing the work for eggs. Take a quick look. I'm going to check it from the other side just to see. Okay. Just because I know this is a sturdy stick mess, I'm going to check it from the other side. I know. There are the eggs. They are way down deep in there. All right. Well, I thought there were four, but with the mirror today, I can see that there are at least five. House runs have, uh, did you see that okay? Yeah. All right. Um, okay, that's good. House runs have uh, clutches for four to eight eggs. So looks like everything's still okay. Close that back up and get out of the way so Mama Wren can <laughs> come back. So that's just a quick guide of checking on a nest box. Enjoy checking yours. <laughs>